Hey guys, all right, we are back with some more Epic History TV, but not with what you guys want me to watch. This time, we are heading back to the First Crusade because we watched part one of two. Now we're going to watch part two of two since, well, it's pretty easy to finish off. Might as well finish it off this series before getting back into Napoleon um, <laughs> because uh, uh, I hate you guys, obviously, and I want to, you know, keep keep napoleon away from you for for as long as i can actually i probably should watch napoleon it'd be good for views yeah this channel's dying i'm just gonna watch what the fuck i want now <laughs> january killed january began the kill february is just finishing it off um we're gonna go ahead and uh just get right into the first crusade part two of two I forgot what happened in uh, part one. October the fucking music. It's so good. Two years had passed since Pope Urban II preached a crusade to help the Byzantine Empire in its war against the Seljuk Turks. Now the first crusade had reached the great city of Antioch. It was the last major Turkish stronghold standing between the crusade and its goal the holy city of jerusalem Woohoo! but antioch was virtually impregnable with its citadel atop a 1000 foot mountain damn and too large to encircle damn the giant crusader That's army could only camp outside cool. its walls cool and pray for a miracle but that winter they ran out of food Horses, men, and camp followers began to starve. Oh no. A trickle of supplies continued to arrive by sea, mostly from the Byzantine-controlled island of Cyprus. And they defeated an attempt by Radwan of Aleppo to break the siege at the Battle of Lake Antioch. But the Battle Crusaders' the situation seemed hopeless. Morale fell as deaths and desertions rose steadily. In March, a Crusader fleet arrived with much-needed reinforcements and supplies. Finally, one night, Bohemond of Taranto and 60 of his men scaled a tower on the southern wall, whose commander had been bribed. Ooh. As dawn broke, Bohemond's men opened the city gates and the Crusader army poured in. That's fucking they massacred cool. massacred soldiers and I civilians I want a movie alike. about that. Has there been a movie about that? There probably While has been. desperate Muslim survivors it's on, fled you know, to the citadel. You know, this is Which continued to resist all Middle attacks. East. Antioch it's, it's had usually fallen. a movie about the First Crusade. But now, a giant Turkish army was assembled under the command of Khor Buga, governor of Mosul. First, he attacked Baldwin in Edessa, but abandoned his siege after three weeks hmm. and marched on Antioch. But that puts that puts an enemy behind him. Why would he do that? Does he really think? I mean, maybe Beaumont, Beaumont, whatever the fuck his name was, I already forgot, isn't going to attack. But still, that's that's a high risk. Uh. To leave an enemy behind you. The Crusader army was exhausted, starving, and now trapped. They could expect no help from the Byzantines. Emperor Alexius, busy securing his own territory in Anatolia, had received false reports that the Crusade had already been destroyed. Fearing a Turkish counterattack, he withdrew to Constantinople. Day. Then, inside Antioch, a relic was miraculously discovered. Supposedly the holy lance thrust into Christ's side at his crucifixion. And the Crusaders' faith in their holy mission was renewed. Although heavily outnumbered, the Crusaders decided to meet the Muslim army outside the city walls. Oh, geez, they are with the zeal of religious fanatics, seeing visions of saints and angels. So they, they want that crazy? The Muslim army, 
which turned and fled. What? How? Why? The, the, the Crusaders had such balls that the Islamic army just ran away? Huh? Kurboga, accusing his commanders of treachery, possibly correctly, set fire to his camp and withdrew. The Muslim defenders in the citadel, witnessing this stunning victory, quickly surrendered. In summer 1098, Fatimid forces from Egypt captured Jerusalem from the Artukid Turks. Al Afdal, Grand Vizier or Chief Minister of Egypt, saw the Seljuk Turks as his greatest enemy, and even tried to make an alliance with the Crusaders against them. But the Crusaders were not interested. Instead, Spicy. they spent five months around Antioch, foraging supplies and arguing among themselves. <laughs> Sounds like Stephen Europeans. Stephen of Blois and Hugh of Vermandois had already given up and returned home. Now Bohemond of Taranto claimed the former Byzantine city of Antioch for himself, breaking his oath to Emperor Alexius to return such territories to him. Bohemond argued that the Emperor had broken the oath first, by failing to help the Crusaders during the siege. Spicy? Divisions deepened after Bishop Adhemar of Lepuy died from illness. Lepuy? He'd been the Crusades' spiritual leader and a unifying presence on their council. Meanwhile, Crusaders carried out a brutal massacre of civilians at Ma'arat al-Numan. Pressure from the mass of ordinary Crusaders forced their leaders to put aside their differences and march south towards Jerusalem. Except for Bohemond, who remained in Antioch, where he declared himself prince. As the Crusaders entered Fatimid territory, many local rulers offered up money and supplies to avoid violence. Other villages mm, had been abandoned. Happened, yeah. As the Crusaders neared Jerusalem, they found wells poisoned, trees cut down, and animals driven away. So they, so the uh, Fatimid Caliphate is—they're doing some uh, um, Russian tactics. Uh, that's. Try to get the actual uh, name of it, the actual name of the strategy there, where you burn and then run, flee. I mean, obviously the Russians did it most famously, but a bunch of other people have obviously. It's, it's not like an, a Russian original idea, right? So, uh, but I just forget the name, name of it. Anything that could help the Crusaders had been destroyed. On the 7th of June, 1099, the Crusaders got their first sight of Jerusalem. Many fell to their knees and This is a really neat joy. picture that they like cropped together here. But they faced a serious challenge. Their map they were now reduced Jerusalem. to about 12,000 fighting men, not enough to encircle the city. And they were running out of food and water. Jerusalem would have to be taken by storm. The siege. Dun dun dun. The barren landscape meant the Crusaders had no timber to build siege engines. And on the 13th of June, their first assault with a single scaling ladder was easily repulsed. Four days later, six Genoese galleys arrived at Jaffa, where they were soon blockaded by the powerful Fatimid fleet. So the sailors took apart their ships and carried the timber to the siege at Jerusalem. <laughs> Mad black? The Crusaders foraged more wood from the surrounding land, enough to build two siege towers. These mobile wooden structures would be wheeled up to the outer wall and allow the Crusaders to directly assault the enemy battlements. They got a little catapult on top. One neat. tower 
was stationed with Raymond of Toulouse's forces in the southwest. The other was with Godfrey of Bouillon's troops to the north. Bouillon. On the 8th of July, see Tancred is a character in the uh, history TV show Nightfall, which is far from historically accurate, but I think season two is a whole lot better than season one. And I like the fighting that was in the show. I thought it was, I thought, I thought it's a good show. Definitely not historical. Don't, do not get that in your mind. It is far from that, but it is, I thought it was very entertaining. And I like the way they ended the show since it's probably not coming back for a season three. It's on Netflix. At least it's on Netflix in the USA. I don't know uh, where it might be elsewhere. But God, I enjoyed that show. I think I might have to rewatch that show again. Anyways, back back to our regularly scheduled content. Taking God's aid in the impending assault, the entire crusade walked in procession around the city, finishing with a religious service on the Mount of Olives. On the night before Those the attack, bishops or Godfrey priests suddenly like they were on, moved like, his siege tower like, to a less well-defended section like. of the city walls. The final assault began on the 15th of July, 1099. In the north, Godfrey of Bouillon's troops managed to fight their way across from their tower onto the city walls, establishing a bridgehead. Soon, they were inside the city, and overcome with religious euphoria and pure bloodlust, they went on the rampage. Oh no, that's not good. soldiers and civilians, Jews and Muslims, women and children. It was an orgy of shocking, prolonged slaughter. What Barbaric. the fuck, Crusade? but not unique for the age. No, sadly not. Not unique at all. The First Crusade had secured its goal in the face of overwhelming odds. And just four weeks later, at the Battle of Ascalon, the Crusaders smashed a Fatimid relief army sent to recapture Jerusalem. Most Crusaders, their vows fulfilled, soon returned home to Europe. Only around 300 knights remained to defend Jerusalem under Godfrey of Bouillon, now named Defender of the Holy Sepulchre. The man who'd set these great events in motion, Pope Urban II, did not live to hear the news that Jerusalem had been taken. Huh. He died just two weeks after the city's fall. Oh, damn. The new Crusader states that emerged, the Kingdom of Jerusalem, the County of Tripoli, the Principality of Antioch, the County of Edessa, lived on precariously, surrounded by enemies. And the Muslim world would not remain so catastrophically divided for long. <laughs> no, it would not. Soon it would unleash its own holy war against the Crusader states, turning the Holy Land into a battleground for almost two centuries. In response, more crusades would be launched from Europe, but none would ever match the bloody, spectacular success of the First Crusade. Research and artwork for this... I don't need to hear about their sources, mainly because I trust them, and also you can see them here. Um, this is cool. This is, I love the research that they do. Um, see, yeah, it's just... I'm showcasing what books they use for the research. Let's go to this image here. I really like this image of the the Crusader Knight with the spear into this man's face, into his looks like maybe cheek, maybe maybe jaw. That's what I look. Maybe under, maybe right here under the chin, maybe, maybe. Hmm. That he's falling like this. I think this is a pretty good uh, recreation of the events here in this picture, this drawing. And the spear's going, eh, you know what? Might be like around here. Ah, yes, I have spoken. Um, yeah, this is a good video, of course. Um, I don't think really Epic History TV makes mistakes. They, they do their research. They do a good job. 
they tell because obviously if you wanted to get everything perfect i don't know for a history like this the amount of research you'd need to do is like fucking impossible because there's also a lot of sources on the islamic side and a bunch more sources on the crusader side uh, primary sources all that so the amount of research you'd have to do you know to make a perfect first video on the first crusade one that video would probably be like five days long <laughs> in terms of runtime so like yeah um i don't know like that's the, that's the way i look at when i watch these history videos it's like i know how what it's like to do extensive research i'm doing extensive research right now for my thesis on alfred the great and just the sheer amount of research that i have to do for this just for like the, the paper is only going to be 25 to 30 pages long um that amount of research is taking me a whole semester to do so yeah you know the, this is their job they don't have the time like me to spend a semester or whatever researching right i don't know um i don't know why i wanted to go on that tangent i my brain's a mess um anyways i hope you guys enjoyed remember to leave a suggestion down below for what you want to see me react to next and i will see you guys in the next video peace